uh, the massive one trillion rand nuclear build program that was being pursued by the Jacob Zuma administration was met by a growing resistance, and that's to put it lightly. Many arguing that the country cannot afford it and that the cost of renewable energy sources continues to go down and therefore it makes more sense economically to do that. So what happens uh, to the nuclear build program under a Ramaphosa uh, president? In the studio with me, I have the chairman uh, of the Nuclear Energy Corporation, uh, Dr. Kelvin uh, Kemp. Thank you, sir, and welcome to the program. Thank you, Godfrey. Have you lost friends because of this whole furore around, I called it a massive trillion rand nuclear build program? Yes, I noticed very much. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> you, also, you also said the cost of uh, the wind energy and the solar energy is coming down and the nuclear cost and so on. In fact, right now in South Africa, nuclear is the cheapest electricity by far. And by far the most expensive electricity is the wind and the solar electricity. And a lot far. of people would challenge you. Uh, it's absolutely not the case. You can look up the numbers. Um, they are absolutely like that. The nuclear energy is costing about half the price of the selling price, the Eskom selling price. Yeah. The wind and the solar is costing much more than the selling price. So Eskom is selling the wind and solar at a loss at this stage. And that is the reality of the situation. So it's a myth to say that wind and solar is cheaper yeah. than nuclear. What you get with nuclear is, a, is 80 years, if not maybe 100 years in due course of a power station. Yeah. Wind and solar are designed for about a 20-year cycle. So for starters, you should start off by saying you need three entire wind cycles to equal a nuclear cycle. So what happens with a nuclear power station is you build the thing at the beginning like buying a house when you go and get a bond. Yeah. That's where your money comes in. Once you've bought the house, yeah. you then pay it off over many years, and when it's paid off, you're then living for largely for free. Some people would argue that now yeah. Kuburg is only halfway through its life, and yeah. it's really, really, really profitable. Yeah, some people would argue that uh, ESCOM is uh, running at a loss on those uh, renewable energy projects because it's uh, for the safer and uh, better future for us all, and therefore it's excusable. But let's not go there. I'm wondering, actually, if you're going to be out of work now that uh, Jacob Zuma is gone and his nuclear program, and you've got Ramaphosa and uh, his new finance minister, he hasn't said anything on nuclear, but we do know that there's a suggestion that nuclear is going to go on the back burner. Well, as you say, there's a suggestion, but the suggestion is largely coming out of the media. It's not coming from credible people at this stage. Um, what has happened is that it's been said that there's a, enough electricity now, yes. which is misleading, because the nuclear is being built for seven or eight years into the future. So when we start building nuclear today, you get it seven or eight years into the future. Building nuclear starting next week doesn't mean you've got electricity next week. Of course. We, we're looking at a long-term thing. The cost is also highly misleading because what happened is that when the, the plans were drawn up for 9,600 megawatts of extra nuclear, it was for three power stations built sequentially. So what would happen is they'll start building one power station, two yeah. or three or four years into that one, they will start the next one, two or three or four years, the next one. Okay. So when people take this supposed trillion rand, which actually isn't a trillion rand, it's okay. like 650 billion, no, nobody's ever said a trillion other than the anti-nuclear activists. When you take that figure, that's for three power stations built sequentially, each one designed for a 60 to 80 year lifetime. Sure. So it's a completely different philosophy to bu building wind turbines almost overnight to last only 20 years. Right. So you've got to approach it differently. Now we're finding huge interest out of other African countries to go nuclear. Because so many other African countries are 100% hydro or nearly 100% hydro. Which like Cape Town right now, if it doesn't rain, African and countries can lose as much as half the nation's electricity. You mm. cannot go into the future that way. Sure. Just recently I had discussions with Rwanda. The Rwandan people are saying they want to double their electricity output right now, and they yeah. can't. Mm. They're entirely hydro, and they're stuck. They've got no co uh, coal, oil, gas, nothing like that. Yeah. So they've either got to import, which puts them strategically in awkward position, or build yeah. something like a pebble bed nuclear reactor, yeah. which is a small reactor in comparison to the big ones yeah. that South Africa is planning. So to go back to my question, it sounds to me like you're saying to me that your work has not stopped. In fact, in not the background, all. you are keeping on as, uh, as you have been doing in the past. You also mentioned now, in a Cyril Ramaphosa government, I'd like to point out that this whole nuclear planning started in around the year 2000. It was well underway by the time President Zuma took office. It's not something that President Zuma invented. As far as I'm concerned, President Zuma supported it because it was the right thing to do, and yeah. many other sensible people supported it as well. There's been a complete smear campaign against nuclear 
by the anti-nuclear lobby worldwide. Yeah. And they come along and they say it's dangerous and there's no solution to yeah. the waste problem yeah. and all sorts of stuff like this. And it's very expensive, which is just not true. I actually think we need a conference in which to discuss all these things and uh, maybe that's the platform that we're going to go for the other well, uh, granular detail around uh, that. Uh, at the end of May, the uh, end of April, beginning of May, there is an annual conference here called Nuclear Africa and we hope as many African delegates come as possible. They can look it up. Sure. So let's talk about uh, the politics around the nuclear. Right. You're saying you're continuing your work. Absolutely. Does that involve any government approvals or this is work that you do in your normal day to day that sort of looks outside of other politics? It's got all the government approvals at the moment in that this and is what the is that work? That this is the current energy plan which we are executing. We are waiting now for approval to be able to go into the market to ask for um, first round of quotations. Now I emphasize South Africans will build this nuclear reactor. It's not going to be built by foreigners. The concrete is going to be poured by South Africans. The steel is going to be laid by South Africans. We will go into collaboration with some foreign country to use their plans. South Africa exports Mercedes-Benz motor cars, BMW motor cars, Toyota motor cars. If you go into any of those factories, they're made with South African welders, South African guys, Titan, That's true. so on. The fact that we make um, uh, those cars to German or Japanese design does not mean Germans and Japanese are coming out to do the work. True. So the work will be done by South Africans. 50% of the uh, money is designed to stay here. There's a 50% localization target. We're not going to be importing concrete. Sure. We're not going to be bringing electricians into South Africa. We're not going to be bringing truck drivers in and all that type of thing. So there's a huge economic injection. Mm -hmm. Now, bear in mind, during the State of the Nation address, President Ramaphosa said things like he wants to see localization. Yes. Nuclear will do that. He wants to see reindustrialization. <laughs> Nuclear will do that. He wants to see economic growth. Yeah. You need the power. Yeah. It's well known if you don't have electricity, you don't you get growth. Grow. You've got to show confidence yeah. to business. And all over Africa, I emphasize, we're getting numbers of countries coming saying, yeah. can they talk to us about looking towards a nuclear future? Yeah. It's not just South Africa. Yeah, I'm going to come and uh, listen in on your conversation with Cyril Ramaphosa, what you talked about. I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. But let's talk about your new minister. Have you met him? Jeff Adeva? No, not yet. When I've, are you I've, met, him? I've met him to shake hands in the past, but I haven't met him in his capacity. When are you meeting him? We haven't got plans yet. What he's kind of a conversation do you think you're going to have? He's only been in office a few <laughs> hours virtually. So. What kind of a conversation do you think you're going to have? Oh, I believe we're going to have a very sensible conversation because I think when the actual proper analysis is done, one will see that nuclear is essential. Uh, and it's, it's completely incorrect to project one check once, yeah. which is the image that's been created, trillion rand, everybody freaks <laughs> out. It isn't a trillion rand, as much as that, over a 10 to 15 year period. Yeah. No nuclear person it's with half a brain ever proposed that the country spend money faster than it can afford. Yeah, you my see? producer just reminded me that the man who refused to sign, who was fired for refusing to sign on the nuclear deal is back in the finance ministry. That means your, your job is going to be much, much more difficult. Actually, uh, I, I beg to differ on that. The previous finance ministers, I met uh, two people, I won't name them right now, but both are back in the, in the cabinet. Oh. Um, well, Mr. You're Gordon is one. You've got some allies. And we spoke <laughs> in the passageway and I said, can we have a discussion on nuclear? And he said, What did yes. he say? He said, absolutely, let's do that. Unfortunately, that was a, I met him again about a fortnight later and said, can we have this meeting? He said, please do, come and enlighten me. And what happened is a couple of weeks later. Or next that comes under his ministry, his no, public enterprises, no? I no, but I want to emphasize, nobody has come out anti-nuclear. People have come out cautiously saying we can't afford to spend a lot yeah. of money in one lump sum. Yeah. We never ever proposed that you spend a lot of money in one lump sum. It was sure. never ever the plan. Uh. This is a fiction that's been created in the media and keeps getting propagated about this massive expenditure. It isn't a massive expenditure. Yeah. It's the same as any major um, project. If you built a new Cecil, if you built a new harbour, yeah. you budget it and then you build as you go, the money is expended. It's not one cheque signed once and put in the post to yeah. some foreign country, which is the image that's been deliberately created by anti-nuclear lobbies. Yeah. We don't do that. I'm, try I'm, try I'm trying not to be offended by your reference to the <laughs> media. <laughs> That's We're trying to get a good story. Way, yeah. CNBC is particularly sensible. <laughs> it's one of the really sensible <laughs> media. Thank you. I wanted some you, others I wanted you to you. say that. The Russian Association, though, has that uh, been blown out of context? What, 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 what's the story there? Yes, absolutely. There's, there's four or five countries that have got the potential to be the suppliers now. Russia is one of them. So is China. So is Korea. So is France. Uh, potentially so is the UK, right. uh, not the UK, sorry, the US, although okay. the US is dropping back now because they uh, are losing a lot of the, their nuclear skills. 
So all of those countries are potentials <coughs> for being the suppliers of the plan. So again, yeah. I emphasize not sending bulldozer drivers here. So whoever plans we use, we will in collaboration, our engineers and their engineers, yeah. we will build this reactor. If they arrive here and they tell us to build a snow barrier around the reactor because they've got a snow barrier, we're going to say we don't need a snow barrier in because South Africa. Because we don't have snow yeah. in Africa. I found just the other day that there's a factory up on the, in the Free State that's got snow, snow devices on it because <laughs> they just imported them. <laughs> the old Durban station that's now a national monument has got an anti-snow roof built onto oh, it. Goodness See, me. this is the type of thing that happens. We won't do that. We will look at sure. it and build it to South African conditions. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why some people are scared because they think there's a lot of money that's pie, pie playing around under the table. But uh, a conversation for another day. That was the chairman of the Nuclear Energy Corporation Board, uh, Dr. Kevin Kemp.